Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. This is the Clay Edwards Show. I am, of course, Clay Edwards. We are live here on 103.9 WYAB at the lovely Cotton Exchange Plaza out in Flora, Mississippi. We're streaming worldwide at WYAB.com. And we're on the TuneIn app. Just go search WYAB. And this morning, I got busted out my cell phone, turned the thing on, put it up, opened up the Facebook app, and uh, I am streaming live uh, in living color on the Facebook, the Save Jackson Facebook page for the first segment of the show. So if you want to check that out, if you want to leave a comment, uh, hit share on that video, that would be awesome. And uh, I've got something cool in my hand that you're only going to see if you're streaming live on the Facebook page. I am holding a bottle of Jackson bottled water i'm sure this is the safest cleanest bottled water that one could ever drink i mean it's straight from jackson tap water I may send a case of this to chalkway's house <laughs> may, we'll send this to we'll send this to joe biden that'll get him over the cancer and the covid pretty quick <laughs> all right hey look man if you guys want to chime in on today's show after the first segment i'll open the phone lines up the mac hike of flowood phone line is 601 601- Eight seven nine zero 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 two. The Guns and Gear text line. If you want to send the text to the show, seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. One more time on the text line, seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. All right, man. I, let's just start with this. Let's start with the big police chase yesterday that ended in tragedy. It was a terrible, terrible situation. You hate for that to unfold. Um, it looks like Pearl Police was chasing a guy, and he had a wreck in South Jackson there. The the suspect hit the mail truck. I think I orig- I don't think. I know I originally reported it wrong on Save Jackson. I said that the Pearl Police hit the mail truck. That was the video I was watching from the scene had it wrong. And uh, that's me. I own that mistake, and I did correct it. The The suspect hit the mail truck. And the postal worker was killed. And here's a really sad, I mean, uh, any loss of life is sad like that, innocent loss of life. That very mail worker, just a, I, I don't know if it was last year or a couple years ago, but here recently, won the Hero of the Year USPS Award. I'm not sure on the exact name of it, but that's how it was explained to me. That mail worker, that mailman, um, saved somebody out of a burning house while he was on his mail route um so it really looks like we lost a good one yesterday that as of this morning the family had not released the name i don't believe um i know it but i don't want to release it until the family does i feel like that's that's the respectful thing to do there but keep that family in your prayers keep his friends and keep keep the mailman in your prayers my my friend uh miss valerie yeah, you know, she she's a male lady over in South Jackson. She stays mad at me a lot because we don't always agree politically. But you know, she knows I love her, and uh, I'm praying for them. I know she was friends with him. Uh, another buddy of mine, Justin's a mailman. He sent me a message yesterday thanking me for sharing the stuff. And we all probably know somebody that works for the for the postal service. So keep your mailman and mail lady friends in your family. I'm going to read a little bit of this article. This is just to catch you up in case you're you know been living in a hole the last 24 hours. This is from darkhorsepressnow.com. It says authorities have confirmed that a postal worker was killed when his truck was hit earlier today when a man ran from Pearl Police. Brandon Andrews, age 20, has been taken into custody and charged with multiple charges in connection with the chase of the fatal crash. Uh, Pearl Police officers attempted to make a traffic stop on the Toyota Camry Andrews was driving for speeding westbound on I-20 just before 11 a.m. Uh, the police said Andrews allegedly failed to pull over and officers pursued Andrews, continued westbound on I-20 uh, on to I-55 South and into the Jackson City limits. And I'm going to quit reading there, and this is where I'm going to jump in with my personal opinion here. Here's the deal, guys. I understand why the knee-jerk reaction from everybody is going to be, why were they chasing to go? Somebody had to die over a... Uh, Somebody running on a, from an expired tag or speeding or whatever. I did a YouTube video about this yesterday afternoon. And I, and it's like this. Like, why didn't they just let him go? Nobody had to die with this. You never know. If someone is stupid enough to run just because they're speeding 
or just because they have an expired tag or the window tint's too dark or just some minor traffic violation at the end of the day. If somebody is stupid enough to run because of that, if I'm a cop, the first thing I think of is what are they really hiding? Why are they really running? Because there's no reason to run if you're just going to get a ticket. No reason. You know, do they have, do, have, have they kidnapped somebody? Let's go worst case scenario because that's kind of how it ended, right? So it's easy to imagine another type of worst case scenario. Let's say they have kidnapped somebody and they've got them in the trunk. Any numerous things could be going on here. They could be somebody that's out wanted for murder and has a warrant for murder. Uh, so you, I will not blame the police. It's terrible. It is a tragedy. You know, we can go back and forth about them crossing into Jackson. Pearl is Jack is a, it's the first line of defense for Rankin County. Pearl and Richland right there on I-20 is the first line of defense from, from Jackson, from Jackson's nonsense spilling over into Pearl. Now, I know this guy lived in Flowood, but I'm just making a point here. If Pearl and Richland and Brandon, if they're going to be lax, then what's to keep the criminals from coming over there? You have to set a standard that criminals fear. And they've done that. And unfortunately, when bad people decide to do bad things, like what this guy did yesterday, he may, he may have been a good guy up to this point in his life, but he made one bad decision that has now, you know, they talk about the butterfly effect. This is the butterfly effect. He, those blue lights coming on was the first flap of the wings. Then him deciding to run, or you know what, better yet, him deciding to run was the first flap of the wings over in Rankin County. And when that butterfly quit flying is when he hit that mailbox. That is the butterfly effect in, in, in perfect full color for you. I can't think of a better way to describe it. That is the butterfly effect. He made a terrible decision, and it ended in an innocent person losing their life. It's never the bad guy that loses their life in these situations, is it? It's never the bad guy. You know, I, I, I mentioned yesterday I had a friend of mine whose mom was killed in an accident similar to this last year. I did it on my YouTube video, and I... And I just got a text from him. I'm going to read it here during the break because I can't cut my phone off. But I can't begin to imagine how it feels to be a family member or friend of somebody that gets killed like that. And I don't want to pretend I do. I, I don't. But we we can't let bad guys go. I, you just can't do it. it it's a risk-reward, and it is terrible when it ends like this. And I feel terrible. And if you knew how it was going to unfold, if you say – well, it was just speeding, and we just let that one go. But you don't know that if it's just speeding. So, you know, it's it's hard to do to do a good thing. It's hard to do the right thing. And sometimes doing the right thing is going to make a bunch of people mad. But that that's what you have to do. I, I, I do not, I will not um, be angry at parole police. I won't. I'm sorry. Actually, I don't know what I'm apologizing for. I'm just not going to be mad at Pearl Police. Those guys do a hell of a job keeping that area safe. And, you know, if somebody wants to screw up, this is what happens. You know, there, there are consequences and repercussions, unfortunately, to this type of behavior. Uh, if you want to call in after, the next, after we uh, come back from this commercial break, the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line is 601 879 Zero two, the guns and gear text line seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. Uh something else that's on deck is the Mississippi Free Press is reporting that the Mississippi Education Board has removed the ban on guns in K through twelve schools citing state law. Uh the Mississippi what's that other liberal rag mississippi today.org is reporting that that is not the case so we'll, we'll try to break that down but either way let's just say that teachers are allowed to carry firearms in the schools then these little messed up kids on their ssris they're gonna come in there thinking they're gonna shoot up a classroom they're gonna f around and they're gonna find out if they get the right teacher that's the way it should be. 
You know, if you're a teacher, you don't want to carry, great. Great. If, uh, if you're a teacher and you want to carry, God bless you. God bless you. You know, that is your First Amendment right. These gun-free zones are murder zones. I made a joke on Facebook. Unfortunately, it went right over some people's heads the other day. I said, I'm going to put a no guns allowed sign on my front door of my house. I mean, just so criminals know that when they break in my house, they can't have a gun. It'll make it safer for me and my family. I mean, they can come in, they can club us upside the head and, and take everything, but they'll know don't bring the guns inside because that's what criminals do. They follow rules. They follow the laws. So I, I got that, I got that sign hanging up outside my door. So criminals know. So I've, I've been able to sell all my guns now. Got big government. Clay sold all his guns. Just so you know. Uh, I, I put a sign on my door. I'm saying I'm going to put one on my car too that says, uh, when carjacking me, uh, no firearm allowed. How stupid does that sound? That sounds stupid, doesn't it? Well, criminals think the same thing when they see no guns allowed, when they want to go in somewhere and shoot something up. Oh, no, sorry, Billy. We got to take our guns back to the car. They said, there's a sign that says no guns allowed. This, this is a gun free zone. We can't, we can't commit our mass shooting here. Whoo. When you say it out loud sometimes, when you say it out loud. All right. Look, man, this is the Clay Edwards show. We're going to take our first break. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards show here on 103.9 WYAB. Hey, real quick, man. This segment is going to be brought to you by my friends out at Raymond Farmer's Market. If you are looking for somewhere to get out and eat tonight, take your family out to eat. It's catfish night out there at the Raymond Farmer's Market. You can go get you some of that awesome Simmons Farms fried catfish. All their sides are made from scratch, locally sourced, genuine Mississippi vegetables. Can't go wrong. Hey, maybe you've got an appetite for a steak. Tomorrow night, you can go out there, steak night. Saturday night is steak night. <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, you can get the 10-ounce filet, the 16-ounce ribeye, or the 3-pound tomahawk ribeye. It's so big it comes out on a cutting board. Everybody that's had it says it's absolutely phenomenal. I had the smaller ribeye one night. Um, it was phenomenal. 100% grass-fed, organic beef, locally sourced, the whole nine yards. Check out RaymondFarmersMarket.com or go to Facebook and search Raymond Farmers Market. All right, man, we've got a call here on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, brother, you on there? Good morning, Clay. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm just glad to know, you know, I'm, I hate what happened yesterday, but I just know, just want people to know that that person wasn't from Jackson, so can't blame that on us this time. Well, but you can say... Contrary to Frere, you can say that he thought he would be safe if he got to Jackson. Well, he could thought that, but all that you didn't want to tag him and see where he's from, mm-hmm. and they went to the house and got him. He's like, let me get to that. Let me get to that 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 lawless land known as Jackson, mm-hmm. Mississippi. I'll be safe when I get there. And also, the um, that the teenager that got killed, the guys that killed them was from Bolton, so they weren't from Jackson either. So it ain't that all the people from doing crime in Jackson is from Jackson. Oh, no, I don't think anybody believes that. Well, just like the the kid that shot up the uh, crawfish bowl was from Brandon or lived there anyway. But people know they can go to Jackson for their BS. Uh, yeah, that's true. So that's my and, and, and that's why I got a question about, you know, since Jackson's so bad, how come Rankin County and Madison County ain't never built the homeless shelter to play homeless people in their county yet? They building everything else. So why not build a homeless shelter since Jackson's so bad? Why they don't build homeless shelters for the homeless people in their county instead of dropping off of downtown Jackson like they do? Well, you just drop them off amongst their people. Jack- They're not their people, though. Jackson has the they, infrastructure they, they, for if it. They, if, they, if they from Rankin County and they from Madison, how come Rankin County and Madison don't have homeless shelters? Because the homeless people don't want to be in Rankin County and Madison County. They drift right back to Rankin County because, I mean, to uh, Hines County because that's where all the drugs and the, the free wiggling. It's a downtown area. It's just much more conducive to being homeless. Most of those, home, Chris, most of those homeless people, real talk here, this is the uncomfortable truth in the room. Most of those homeless people are there by choice and are bad decisions they're still making. It is drug addiction. It is 
very little of it is true mental health. 90%, I would say, is people who are active drug addicts that do not really want help. Yeah, I'm just saying, though, I mean, they, they seem to build everything else in malice. I mean, our ranking, so, I mean, since Jess is so bad, help out. You no, know? you no, know, I mean, Jess is a little down town. What, what we got, what, two or three homeless shelters down there? And they always been overran. I mean, they say, you no, know, they ain't doing all that good. Help them out. You no, know? rank, the rank account of malice kind of got all the money. Hey, I tell you what, it, since, since, since you got a little bleeding heart today and you want to help out with the homeless, it is a, it is a, a shower power day downtown to go help feed and uh, clean up the homeless folks and all that stuff right there, right there behind the old Vantro on uh, on South State Street. Well, I get the homeless out whenever they get I see them, so that's why I know that's all that's all I always wanted to know. I mean, because, you no, know, like the old news story where they caught the pair of policemen dropped the lead off the old bus station. Uh, that's I mean, where the person asked to go. See, that's what I'm saying. So, why drop them off because they asked to go there? Well, I mean, I, they just, I mean, they, they were being, comp- I don't know, that's where they asked to go. I, I mean, they were, they were being nice. I mean, one of the most sense, no, more reasonable for, for ranking them out and building, you know, building a homeless shelter to help homeless in county just hey, like we let, here. let me break a little news to you might not be aware of jpd drops homeless people off in rankin county too so why 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 jpd would do this because they don't want them i never heard jpd dropping homeless in rankin county jpd drops people coming straight out of that third floor of st dominic's or whichever one it is with the uh the, the mental the mental health ward they dropping those folks right off in rankin county a lot of times so look it happens both ways i promise all right. Hey, Chris, I got to take another call, brother. Thank you for listening this morning. Uh, uh-huh. All right. Let's go to the next call here on the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, you're on there. Hey, Clay. Hey, what's up? Talk two things. One of the homeless people. I've, I've known a few of them people. And I talked to one of them one day. They just didn't have anybody. They, some of them have a source of income. They just don't have anybody. They want to be alone. They don't want to be by themselves. That's what a lot of them do, honest to God. No, no. I mean, I that's, that's what some of those, that, that is a, I was, I'm following a guy on Facebook. Um, and I saw a post he made the other day. He was, he was homeless for five years by choice. Now, and, and he lives in Pearl, he's from Pearl, and now he's about to ride his Harley across the country. He's just, some people just do that stuff. You know Tim, don't you? I'm not going to that's, say that, that, that's who I'm talking about. Tim at one time was worth many millions. Probably still is. Had a very, 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 two very good businesses. But make a long story short, uh, Clay, I mean, that cop, that Chase Sam, dude, this has happened too many times. It happened, I want to say, several years ago in Ridgeland. It happened with Clinton one year. They hit a guy for no reason. I think it happened twice with Pearl now. Dude, this is getting to be too much, man. Well, look, I, I, if you know, damn good well, if that was somebody in your family, you'd want them prosecuted. Well, the person that hit them is going to be prosecuted. I mean, that that's it. I mean, the person that chose to run is going to be prosecuted. It sucks. Well, it sucks, man. A, a buddy of mine, I'm a, but I got, since you're taking that side on, let me read you this. This is from a friend of mine whose mom was killed by a guy running from the police last year. Just text into the show. He said, the guy that killed my mom was let go twice uh, during a pursuit. Pearl, I know, pulled back one time, and I think maybe the other was Flowood. Pulled back and let the guy go instead of chasing him. He still hit my friend's mom, killing her and the three passengers in his vehicle. So you never know what's going to happen. Well, Madison don't even chase him anymore, I don't think. I believe that's their policy. Okay. Madison and Rankin County need to get together. Hines County and Madison County need to get together. There's a disconnect there, man. I don't know whose fault it is, but that guy, whoever that person was, I don't know if it was a man or a woman, was just doing their job. And so were the police. I mean, I mean it is it, look, it is a it is an uncomfortable truth about living in a uh, in, in just anywhere in the world. It, this could happen anywhere. I mean, it just happened to end in Jackson because that's where the guy thought he could run off to and get away. But Clay, it, it, it could happen anywhere, but it doesn't mean it has to. Well, just like I said, I'm always pro law enforcement, dude. This has happened one too many times. Like I just said, you can still let them go, and bad people are going to do bad stuff, 
And I, look, I get it, man. It's just not an easy conversation to have because somebody lost their life that was doing nothing other than working. It, it's a terrible situation, and there's going to be emotions on both sides. And I, I would still rather the police do their jobs and follow the bad guys doing bad stuff. I, that's just my side of it. Well, but, you know, like I said, well, this has happened more than one time. I have yet to hear a Rankin County or Pearl or whoever get together with Jackson or Hines County and work out a policy with it. Well, I don't think Jackson has any want to work out a policy. What does Stokes say? Throw rocks at them when they come over here? So Yeah, that, that's it. But Tyree is a, a halfway sensitive guy. Yep. All right, brother. All right, have a good day. You too, man. Well, look, man, emotions are high. Pe- people are on both sides of that. And I, I'm gonna, you know, look, man. When when cops do bad stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak my opinion on it. I, I shared that video, caught a lot of hell from the back the blue crowd about the JPD officers that were harassing my cameraman the other day and telling him he couldn't film. You know, I'm a I'm, I'm gonna call that stuff out when I see it. And I'm just I'm gonna take. I know it sucks. It's tough, man. It's terrible when stuff like this happens. But, um. Nobody, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed to make it home today. Get your right life, get get your life right with God. Hug your family. Tell them you love them. Unburn any bridges you've burned. Make things right with folks. Because you never know when the last time you're going to talk to somebody is. I mean, hell, I'm going to call my mama and, and, and daddy and daughter before I leave here today. Tell them I love them. You just never know. You never know. Tell you what, let's do this. Let's take a break real quick. We'll come back. We'll reset. Uh, This is the Clay Edwards Show. We're on 103.9 WYAB. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. This segment is brought to you by Kimberly Harrelson at Next Home Realty. Listing, selling, or buying a home is easier than you may think. In fact, it's just a click away when you work with the rock star realtor herself, Mr. Kim- Mr. Mrs. Kimberly Harrelson over at Next Home Realty. If you're looking to buy, sell, move to or from the Jackson area, Kimberly is the girl of choice, your realtor of choice. She's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> Can't say enough good things about Kimberly. You can find her online. Go to Facebook and just search Kimberly Harrelson at Next Home Realty. You can just type in some combination of all that, and it will pop up. And she spells Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-E, at Next Home Realty. All right. Let's see here, man. Uh, On the Guns and Gear text line. Let's see. uh, Somebody did text in with something really good here. They, They made a suggestion, said, Maybe these police departments need a helicopter. And I, I'll say this to that. Great idea. Agreed. That, that would fix a lot of it. But the helicopter's got to get up and going. And you know what I mean? Like that, I doubt they're just out flying around wasting fuel, waiting for something to pop off. They got it, the pilot's got to jump in it. They got to get up in the air and get to where the other people are. I'm going to guess that this this whole pursuit, just knowing the little the lay of the land and where they where the chase started versus where it ended, right over there in South Jackson, in a high speed pursuit type situation at that time of the morning, there's not a whole lot of traffic, you know, in that eleven o'clock hour or so, not much traffic, especially on a Thursday. It from start to finish, I bet you it didn't last five minutes. From around the Somewhere in the Pearl on two, on I twenty vicinity, P- Pearl forty nine, that general area there, from Pearl to the stack, we'll say. If it, Pearl was the leading uh, people uh, agency involved, so let's just say it started in Pearl, and it ends right over there off McDowell Road. Yeah, that's less than five minutes, maybe three. Real talk. So. By the time, I, and, and that's just this particular situation I'm breaking down here. I know there's others and and whatnot. I don't know that a helicopter would have made a lick of difference in this particular situation. Uh, so that's just my two cents on that. But uh, hey, g- great, great idea though. Let's see here. Let's check the guns and gear text line on some other stuff here. It says, uh, how about this? When the police is trying to pull you over, why not pull over? The first thing I hear on Channel 16 this morning is Stokes saying the President of the city council needs to stop Pearl and others from chasing into the city. 
never confronting the issue of people not complying. He should be telling everyone that this would not have happened if the guy would have pulled over, plain and simple. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Couldn't have said it better. Could not have said it better myself. You know, think of all the the race BLM deaths and the rioting that could have been avoided had the offending party just complied. I told the story the other day on a much lower level, but I had a Brandon cop come tap on my window and basically said I was parking like an a-hole to move my car. Stepdaughter's in the back seat. Here's this crap. I'm on private property in front of a gas station. Maybe I was part wrong. Maybe I wasn't, but he came at it wrong. I was emasculated. I wanted to say something. I did, but I didn't, (laughs) you know, because I knew this don't end well for clay. This does not end well for clay. If I open my mouth, I bit my tongue, said, yes, sir. And it ruined the rest of my day. Ruined it. I was so mad. I was seeing red for the rest of the day. Not even because of what he said to me, but because I felt like I got punked because I didn't say anything back. But that's the difference in being able to get on the radio the next day or a week later or a month later and complain about it and talk about it versus being in jail or six feet under because an escalation of stupidity cost me my freedom or my life. Again, it sucks, but that's life. Let's see here, man. The texts are rolling in. Uh, Josh says on the guns and gear text line, he's got a, he back to my stuff about putting a no guns allowed sign on my door to stop criminals from bringing guns in my house. If they decide to rob me, he said, he's got a sign up on his property that says uh warning. There is nothing here worth dying for with a revolver pointing at you. And he says, uh, Jackson PD drops more homeless people off in Rankin County. Our PD picks them up. And they want to go back to Jackson and don't understand why Jackson gave them a ride to Rankin. Put blue lights on all bridges. When they flash, traffic is to stop blocking the is to is to stop blocking the bridges. Do this for any alert, and you could stop amber alerts or whatever. I think he may have meant if you, the lights are flashing, traffic is to stop on the bridge. Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to say. Uh, or put traffic lights on bridges. You could flip to red when these situations happen. Yeah, you know what? That is another good idea there. You know, you could, it, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the the things they roll out to get the flat tires. I'm drawing a blank here. They, they give them flat tires without actually having to do that. So, uh, good stuff there. Good stuff. Let's see here. If we got any more text on the Guns and Gear text line. But I, I love the one about, you know, at the end of the day, got to start. It's got to start at home. You got to start telling these folks, just comply, pull over. This all could have been avoided by pulling over. Why is that so hard? Why is that so hard? Um, Let's see here. Another text on the guns and gear text line. So everyone wants to hold Trump accountable for not condemning the rioters on January 6th of last year. But where are the liberals who condemned the riots of 2020? Don't remember one Democrat, including then candidate Biden condemning one rioter, not one Hollywood figure, not one liberal media figure. There was the concern for the victims of the riots. Where was the concern for the victim of the riots? Uh, spare me the sudden morality of condemnation uh, should have no substitute for pursuing criminals. No, absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. A little uh, slightly off topic, but on topic at the same time. Uh, I think Miss Sylvia texts in. She goes, I hope the man that killed the innocent bystander fries Hot alert. Says, uh, as far as those two officers that harassed your cameraman, they were dealt with by the department. I did hear that. I heard there was some internal stuff that went on there. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, this is more text off the Guns and Gear text line. It says, those young guys get a thrill out of being chased by police. I agree. All right, look, I want to bring up a text I got last night, just kind of out of the blue. And this this really hit home for me. This came in about 7 o'clock last night on the Guns and Gear text line. It was, hey, I, again, I have it on me all the time. The phone number is 769-241-1944. I try to reply as often as I can. I thought this was really interesting, and it made me feel good about something. It says, uh, hi, Clay. I'm one of your gay listeners, and I've noticed you talking a lot about the rise of LGBTQ 
over the generations and thought I'd try to explain part of it. The Q is for queer. Queer, as well as I understand it, is basically anyone who has a sexual preference outside of the very vanilla norm. This covers all pansexual, demisexual, cat people, etc., and all the other ridiculous crap we hear about. The point of it is that we do make up about 3% or so of the population, adding the Q and expanding the sexual spectrum to kids who, like all kids, want to be unique, open to a whole lot of more people under, it opens up to a whole lot more people under the umbrella of gay, even though most of the Q folks aren't gay at all. This is a political power move by the progressives, and there's a lot of us who are opposed to it. Not enough, but anyway, I'm a big fan and keep up the great work. Saying what everyone is thinking, but too scared to say. Hope this helps out in some way. I don't know who this person is. Didn't ask them their name. We had a little bit more conversation there. That made me feel great because I, I I beat the drum. When I talk about the alphabet mafia, the LGBTQ, LMNOP, plus pedophile, BLM people, I try to make it a point to say that you normal gay folks that just want to be gay and left alone. I, y'all, I am cool with y'all. I have no problem with y'all. I got your back. I don't have a problem with y'all. I try to make that as clear as I can every day. These are folks who just want to live their life. They're not part of some uh, gay agenda to take over the world and uh, groom all our children. There are normal people. Unfortunately, enough of them don't speak up because they will be vilified in their communities. But I will say this to that. Imagine being a white conservative that lived in Jackson, Mississippi and had 90% of black friends, black Democrat friends growing up and deciding to be the outspoken conservative that I am. I was vilified <laughs> uh, very much so. It's, it's tough, but it's rewarding simultaneously. So speak up, stand up, speak out, and uh, you will be rewarded. It, doing the right thing ain't always easy, but it's rewarding. It absolutely is. I got another text from a buddy of mine yesterday, and I, I thought this was great. The timing was really good. He said, um, and I, obviously I won't, keep, I won't mention his name here, but he said, keep up the great work. You may be tired, but understand people that can't speak up because of their livelihood depend on, livelihoods depend on making it past this administration really depend on you to spearhead our, our like-minded views and said, thank you. And uh, I appreciate that, man. I really do. You know who you are and uh, much appreciated. I, I say it all the time, you know, kind of the voice of the voiceless. And that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. When guys that get on this radio station, myself, Jim Thorne, Mike Madison, Jameson Haygood, Kim Wade, uh, all the guests that aren't afraid to come on these shows and they come in here and they talk or the guests that call into the shows, my buddy Derek that calls in all the time. He uh, he caught some flack from my stalker the other day. You know, he stood right up to it and said, whatever, bring it, Hoss. And, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. I mean, it takes a lot, it, it, you know, to stand firm on your beliefs. And that's what we're going to do here on the Clay Edwards Show. We're going to stand firm on our beliefs. And uh, let's see here. We got another text on the Guns and Gear text line. All right, a, a bit long-winded, so I will read it during the break and get back to it on the other side of the break. But I wanted to get that out there. So, look, just because you see somebody, man, and they're like, oh, they're gay. They're 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 a back crap crazy liberal. It ain't always the case, and I I, I try to be very clear about that. And uh, anytime somebody uh, uh wants to come on this show and sit down and have a conversation, if you're a gay conservative, you want to come on this conversation and have a talk. Come on this conversation. Come on this show and have a conversation. Open invite. Hell, frankly, if you're if you're a uh, if you're a gay liberal, you want to come on the show and have a, a debate or a conversation. You're welcome to come on, too, if you can uh, do it without cussing. Open invitation. Also, while I'm thinking about that, uh, a little unrelated, I want to start interviewing people. I'm going to throw this out into the world here. I want to start interviewing people that have really motivational, inspirational stories of overcoming adversity to whether it was a physical adversity, a mental adversity, a financial adversity, whatever it was. If you've got a really good story to tell, uh, a recovery, whatever it may be. I want to start letting you come on this platform and tell these stories more often. Uh, maybe we'll call it Motivational Mondays or something like that. Anyway, uh, give me a call or give, shoot me an email, clay at wyb.com. And uh, speaking, speaking of some internet stuff, your boy is TikTok famous now. 
I did a video yesterday morning talking about Joe Biden having um, cancer and COVID, and it's gotten over 100,000 views on TikTok in the last 24 hours. <laughs> and just in typical clay fashion, my very next video got me put in TikTok jail. So uh, I'm famous on TikTok, and I can't even post another video for three days. Yeah, that's how you know you're speaking the truth, right? All right, man, let's take our last break of the day. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show, 103.9 WYAB. Let's see. Welcome back into The Clay Edwards Show. This last uh, segment of the week is going to be brought to you by Mack Hike Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Get out there. If you're going to be car shopping this weekend and see my friends out at Mack Hike in Flowood. Right there at Airport Road. we got Chrysler's Dodge Jeep Rams and a ton of used vehicles. Go see Corey, Abe. Brendan, Parker, and Hunter, that's your management team. Tell them Clay Edwards sent you. Hey, if you're out gun shopping or ammo shopping, go out and see Hunter and the team at Guns and Gear right there on 51 in Madison, right there at uh, Yandale Road, I believe it is, right next to Little Willie's in that shopping center. Can't miss it, man. Home of No Limit Ammo. You can shop them online at gunsandgearms.com. We appreciate both of those sponsors for sponsoring our phone line and our text line. So, look, in closing today, <clears throat> don't mess around, and you won't have to find out. Play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. And you kill people along the way. An innocent person lost their life yesterday in a very, very senseless incident. And that's terrible. You, you never be able to get that back. Nothing I'm going to say is going to make that right. No, but nothing I'm going to say is going to make anybody feel any better. Blaming the police, and ain't, that ain't the answer. I got a text from a guy a minute ago. said, you know, if from the time the police call in for a helicopter, said it would take about 15 minutes to get it up and in there. Uh, from, say from like Highway Patrol, for instance. That chase was done and over with before that airport, before that copter could have got in the air. But I still love the energy. I love the thought process of, of a helicopter. That is, that, that's next level thinking, critical thinking. Not critical theory, <laughs> critical thinking. And uh, so I, I definitely appreciate that. Look, man, we had a great week of shows this week. I think pound for pound, this may have been our best week of shows. Uh, just uh, y'all have given me a great opportunity to actually learn how to do this job on the job. And y'all stuck with me. The numbers are growing. I really appreciate all of you out there. I, I, I truly do. I'll be forever grateful for the opportunity y'all have allowed me to pursue doing this. And all the callers, the listeners, everybody who shared anything, uh, go subscribe to the podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, just go type in Clay Edwards Show and hit subscribe. Do the same for the Kim Wade Show and Mike Madison. They they both do they podcast. We're trying to drag Jameson into it. Uh, hadn't quite got him there yet. But uh, go subscribe, share it. You know, I know not everybody can listen all the time. I haven't been able to listen to Kim's show all week. Because I've been doing stuff in the afternoons, but I can go back and listen to the podcast and I'll probably do some binge listening this weekend. Look, y'all stay safe out there. Uh, get out to Raymond Farmer's Market. Eat catfish night tonight, steak night tomorrow night. And hey, if you want to get a steak from there, take it home and cook it. You can do that too. It is a farmer's market and they have the butcher shop there. So I will see you guys back Monday. Jim Thorne's up next, followed by Mike Madison. Peace out. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Tune in next week as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.